All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. So this video is a huge recommendation that I was getting one of my previous SAS videos, and this is actually Operation uh, Barris. So I found a pretty good documentary about this. It's about 27 minutes long. I'll probably just let it play through and uh, maybe stop it every now and again if I need to, but it, it seems like a pretty solid documentary. Now, I wasn't familiar with Operation uh, Barris, or Barris, I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I wasn't really familiar with it until you actually recommended it, uh, unfortunately, because it's a very, very awesome operation to actually look into. So it happened in the year 2000, and it happened in Sierra Leone. Uh, basically, the backstory is some uh, British Army soldiers were taken hostage by some rebel group, I think called the, uh, the West Side Boys, and they also had a liaison officer from Sierra Leone who was uh, assisting in their operations and he was taken hostage as well and uh, I would say out of all of them it looks like he was treated pretty much the uh, the worst just, that's just because he was uh, he was assisting the British Army with what they were doing but this documentary seems pretty pretty legit so I'm very excited to check it out again if you guys aren't subscribed definitely consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you're notified whenever I upload any more videos especially if you're sending in any uh, recommendations if I react to them, you you might miss it if you don't hit the bell. So definitely consider doing that. But this is a pretty solid documentary. Very excited to check it out. Because, again, I didn't really know too much about Operation Barros until you guys actually recommended it to me. The early hours of 10th of September 2000. And Operation Barras is about to begin. Commandos from Britain's elite fighting force, the SAS, are preparing to engage in one of the boldest rescue missions in modern history. Hmm. A mission so dangerous that in the coming hour, these soldiers expect severe casualties. They will be flown deep into the jungle of Sierra Leone, West Africa, in an attempt to release British Army hostages held for more than two weeks. Hey, if you want someone to do it, SAS will get it done, for sure. The hostage takers are known as the West Side Boys, a gang of notorious killers who are well armed and ruthless. What happens as the rescue attempt unfolds has always been a closely guarded secret. Now, the story of the SAS's mission and the terrible days of captivity endured by the hostages is told on television for the first time by the people who are there. Awesome. So it seems like there's going to be some, some first-hand knowledge of the operation from people who took part. So that should be pretty awesome. I wonder who they actually got to, to speak in this video. But that's always the best source of, of you know, the information, is someone who's actually there. So sometimes it gets a little bit twisted, but should get some pretty solid info from them. It's daybreak, and many of the rebels guarding the hostages are sleeping off the effects of a night of heavy drinking. <laughs> They've emptied crates of beer that have been supplied by British negotiators to make them a little less battle-ready. Nice. That's very smart. <laughs> but these will be no pushovers for the SAS. The gang is armed with everything from AK-47s to anti-aircraft artillery. And many are hardened ex-soldiers, conditioned by countless atrocities against men, women and children. Hmm. The West around, Side comes around, are a relic of a merciless civil war that had paralyzed Sierra Leone through the 1990s. We saw Sierra Leone threatened by vicious thugs motivated by criminality, by money, by power. Hmm. Yeah, that's the worst when you have like child In soldiers. In late August 2000, British Defense Secretary Jeff Hoon was faced with making the high-risk decision to send in troops to attack the West Side Boys and free their British captives. The chief of the defense staff briefed me about the operation. He could not rule out uh, British deaths, and it was a difficult judgment in the light of that advice as to whether or not we should go ahead. Hmm. It is the 17th day of imprisonment for the six British Army hostages in the rebels' hands. All right, so here in 17 days doesn't seem too bad, but you got to think when you're in captivity, that must feel like a lifetime. So I'm sure there's a lot of people getting involved at this point, especially because it's been so long and a lot of people are probably thinking about it. It's getting a little more attention. So there's probably a lot of planning going on at this point in time and the, uh, the SAS 
uh, we've already known that the SAS are pretty good at planning everything out. So uh, they're definitely trying to dot their I's and cross their T's with, uh, with this operation for sure. If it is a day like any other, then these men of the 1st Battalion Royal Irish Regiment could face a severe beating or a mock execution. Their commanding officer is Major Alan Marshall. It was his decision that led to their capture, and only his ingenuity and quick thinking that has kept his men alive throughout the worst of their ordeal. Hmm. That's gotta be a hard position to be in. But nothing that's happened to the British compares to the savagery unleashed against Lieutenant Musa Bangura, a military liaison officer attached to Marshall's patrol. He has routinely been beaten and hacked to unconsciousness. His terrible injuries left to fester in the worst of conditions. Hmm. On the morning of the SAS rescue attempt, Musa Bangura is close to death. Operation Barras takes flight in 10 minutes. One of the first to be dropped into the West Side Boys' stronghold will be Bombardier Brad Tinian. This is his first combat mission for the SAS. But even for the most experienced commandos, the attack will be a leap into unfamiliar territory. Yeah, for sure. The SAS is famed for its use of stealth, attacking with the element of surprise. But Operation Barras will be a full frontal assault, jumping from large, noisy helicopters that are easy to shoot down into the heart of a camp that is heavily defended. Yeah, they got Chinooks. Those are very, very big targets. So uh, that already is pretty scary. But when you're talking about full frontal assault, that's even uh, it's even worse. Especially when you're when you're like inserting, whether it be fast rope or whatnot from a helicopter, it makes a pretty big target. But the SAS, yeah, they're known for stealth, but they're also known for their you know their violence and their adaptability. So uh, I'm sure they're going to do pretty well and be pretty successful. Again, it, it, the the planning is a, is a huge portion of it, and the SAS is pretty good at making sure they do that. The SAS mission is the climax to a chain of events that began 17 days earlier. A routine convoy of three British Army Land Rovers was returning to base near Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone. Hmm. The patrol consisted of 12 soldiers, 11 British and Musa Bangura, then a lieutenant in the Sierra Leone Army. We've been together for over two, three months. So, I know most of them. Okay, so if they have him talking in this video, that's gonna be really, really cool uh, to have his point of view, um, especially since he probably went through the, the worst of it. I mean, not even arguably, he definitely went through the worst of it. So, it'll be very interesting to see what he has to say about everything. I know Major Alan Marshall, Captain Lavati, in fact, Captain Lavati was my counterpart. He was the appointed liaison officer. As the convoy approached a roadblock manned by UN peacekeepers, Major Marshall was about to make a decision that would haunt him for the rest of his life, to divert his patrol off its planned route. Major Alan Marshall spoke with the commander. We were still in our vehicles. It's a hard After choice to make. About two minutes, he came back into his own vehicle and we diverted. That's scary. Marshall and most of his patrol still serve in the British Army and are unable to speak publicly. Hmm. However, the story of what happened next has been pieced together with the eyewitness accounts of Musa Bangura and another key player, Lieutenant Colonel Simon Fordham, who was then Marshall's commanding officer. Musa Bangura knew immediately mm. that they were gambling with their lives in a place where extreme violence had become a way of life. Yeah, I can Musa go bad very quick. Good reason to be fearful. Years earlier, he had witnessed a failed mutiny in the Sierra Leone army. The rebellious soldiers were thrown out, but many had ganged together, eventually calling themselves the West Side Boys. Yeah, that can be pretty sketchy, especially when there's a bunch of different factions and you don't necessarily know who the factions align with. That's why you have that liaison officer because they'll they'll generally generally know like 
where the factions are, what their territory is, and who they generally align with. But when you're in like a, a place like that, things can change very quickly and it can get very sketchy if you don't, ne don't necessarily have the control of you know, taking one route over another. Like you can see, he had to divert their, their patrol, and uh, I'm sure he didn't really have too much of, a, of an option for that one. But again, it is hard to make that call, especially the one being in charge of their safety. They were united by a common grudge, especially against serving military officers. I started asking Captain Lavati, can he call the OCA and ask him, say I'm concerned, where is he taking us? This area is a wayside boys infested area. If they see us, they will definitely open fire without even asking. Mm, it must be hard to get his point across too sometimes. We never called, really. That was the unfortunate thing. Except when we are almost in trouble. That was the time he wanted to call the OC, but by then it was too late. That's scary. Especially with the overgrowth. That'd be really sketchy. Hold on. Maybe just a roadblock. Get your weapons down. Figure out what this is. It's not a roadblock. This is a fucking disaster. The patrol's path was cut off by a group of about 50 rebels, led by a commander called Conterby. Good morning. Welcome. What's your mission? British Army. Here to invite your men to attend retraining. Wait a minute. Hmm. Even by the horrific standards of the West Side Boys, Conterby was violent and unpredictable. It's not a good, good person to be in charge. Things can get bad very quick. You come without permission? No. We're here to make you an offer. To offer your men the chance to retrain. We're with... here to take my men away. No, this is a humanitarian mission. We need to report on the well-being of the villagers here. We are very well, thank you. And who the fuck are you? My name is Major Marshall. We've been on patrol up to the Jordanian UN post in Masiaka. Why not stay on the highway? All this west side territory. We have a responsibility. To... It's your responsibility to do as you're told. You shoot, you all die. Corporal. We have a 50 caliber weapon, big weapon. And one of the soldiers really wanted to open fire. I saw the OC giving him instructions. I think that made him not to shoot. <clears throat> but he really wanted to shoot. He was brave. Order your men to hand over all weapons. Mm, I can appreciate no. that. We can't do that, I'm afraid. In the interest of safety, I'm going to ask my men to put down their weapons. They cannot surrender them. I'm not debating you, British Army. Now. OK. Give me a moment to talk to my men. I'm going to ask you all to disengage and hand over your weapons. Sorry about this, everyone. Just need to sort this out. Shouldn't take long. We'll be back on our way. Yeah, again, it's a very hard position. Like, either you, you give up the weapons or you know for a fact it's going to go south very quickly. And they're not really in the best position to, to you know, put up a fight. And it kind of sucks, but I don't know. Again, it's hard for the for the officer in charge to, to make that decision. And I think he did a pretty decent one because again it could have gone south very 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 bad when you have someone like that in charge of of the people you're running into hmm. here can we talk now get their weapons and get their ring come down they we are now shaking these vehicles ripping them off with radios, weapons, irration, everything. Go, move, move, move. What they did. Move. Conterby had first met Musa Bangura when they trained together in the Sierra Leone army. Now he was about to renew their acquaintance in the most brutal way imaginable. They came to our own vehicle where I was. And they found me. It was mm. like they found riches from nowhere. Lieutenant Bangura, so you brought the British here to attack us? No, I didn't. 
They did not ask me anything. I know they don't tell them anything. There was no way I could talk. Everybody was having his own taste of me. Sheesh. Somebody brought a razor blade, just tear off my back. And my face to scratch everything. I was dripping in blood. They are not listening. They are, they are not ready to listen to you. They were shouting. You can't say anything to them. That dude is like Moose's in For having having, you know, to go through all that, he's talking about it like pretty chill, like I'm surprised he's able to talk about it so easily. I mean, that's a really crappy thing to have to go through, but he seems like he's doing a pretty good job of, like, uh, you know, uh, voicing everything. So, I mean, good on him. For someone to be able to go through that, you can imagine he, he probably has a pretty solid mental resolve. Um, maybe it's just because of where he grew up and what he grew up doing, but, yeah, he seems like a pretty pretty solid warrior. Production was to be at the hands of the West Side Boys' child soldiers. Some of them as young as eight. They brought in dozens of these small boys. They call them SBUs. Uh, it's like small boys units. SBUs. Those boys will take anything from branches of trees to whatever canes mm. and they will beat you until these branches or canes perish in their hands before they will stop. And that was the situation I was letting. That's rough. Musa regained consciousness in a so-called dungeon. In reality, one of the camp's latrine pits. I was kept there for the rest of my stay in West Side West. For me, the dungeon is my own accommodation. It's my room, my everything. Sheesh. He's probably got a really... The SAS mission to rescue He's Musa probably got a really close cost. connection to that that pit especially if he was there for what like 16 17 days yeah i'm sure he doesn't like to talk about being in that place for for very long because you can imagine that probably has a pretty pretty big mental strain on on him since he spent so much time in there and it, it was probably extremely miserable especially with all of his cuts and whatnot and that being a latrine pit probably got some uh, some infection and whatnot so yeah that's crappy Literally and you know figuratively, I guess stages is still eight minutes away from launch But members of a small reconnaissance team are already embedded at the very edge of the West Side boys camp nice Good stuff in deep camouflage. They've been here undetected for five days and nights Good stuff. They've eaten slept and worked while barely moving and under constant assault from jungle insects and the soaking tropical heat Okay, real quick, I can ap appreciate how hard that must have been, especially with the mosquitoes and whatnot. The mosquitoes in general drive me insane. Like, you have to deal with them and you kind of get used to them, but, man, it's so mentally taxing to be constantly under assault from, like, mosquitoes and bugs and whatnot and just be uncomfortable the entire time and you can't really do anything about it. But five days being undetected, it it's not necessarily the hardest thing, especially if people aren't necessarily you know, sending out patrols and looking for a reconnaissance. Or expecting it but yeah it can get pretty annoying when you're when your living conditions are pretty rough so good on them for having that discipline just cry see our green alpha all quiet everybody's sleeping off the effects of the hooch <laughs> but right now the SAS rescuers are preparing to board the Chinooks for the short journey to the West Side Boys camp one way or another, the hostages ordeal will end within the coming hour. When you see me, you bow and say good morning, Commandant. Good morning, Commandant. Bow! Bow to me like the British bow to Idi Amin! <laughs> you? Good morning, Commandant. <laughs> These yeah. people were fueled with drink and drugs. And also fueled with the adrenaline and the agitation of the situation that they'd got. And so, uh, on the one hand, they would be perfectly plausible, and then, you know, a couple of minutes later, they would be completely off the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's not a good situation to be in.
Something, something. Mm. I don't hear anything. Jeez, look at the room they're having to sleep in. That's rough. I was particularly concerned about was that the patrol was going to be shot and killed out of hand. And it would either be as a deliberate act that Kelly would do because he just couldn't handle the situation, or that the anarchy in this group would get out of control, especially at night, and an accident could happen or things could get out of control and the patrol would get hurt. So it was very important that we got the patrol and got these soldiers out of this situation as quickly as possible. Negotiator, that now, must be a hard position. Let me talk to Captain Laverty. I want to see how my men are being treated. They are soldiers, Colonel. They are treated as soldiers. It was quite clear to me that we were going to have to mount a rescue operation. Um, we might get somewhere with some negotiations, and if we were, it would have to be quick. Hmm. Um, and that's really the premise upon which we then went on. Oi! You stay there! Stay there! Hello, Captain. Can you tell me how you all are? We're all being treated well, sir. Including Lieutenant Bangura. Mm. You tell everyone we're going to resolve this very soon. We're doing all we can. Will do, sir. Captain John Laverty only came two or three times. And on the second time, we had an incident of gaining intelligence, which was pretty profound at the time. He came forward under guard to me, we shook hands, and it was obvious that he had something in his hand. I <laughs> took it away, put it in my pocket, and did it without everybody else was there, but no one else saw nice. it. Nice. Good stuff. Remember, Colonel, never try to attack us, or your soldiers will die. And he gotta wear that bandana? Away from us. That thing off, Tommy. So, that is solid. Again, when you're talking about these these operations, you want some very solid planning done, but you don't necessarily have the right intelligence to get it done. But if you can have people on the inside to pass off stuff like this, then I'm sure it's going to help a, a crap ton, especially for the SAS, SAS guys who are coming in. They don't they don't want a bunch of unknowns. If they can you know find some information on something or at least a layout of where people are, then that'll definitely help out. was a map that had been drawn by the team of where they were being held, what buildings they were in, where the sentries were, and that was invaluable information because satellite nice. photography can give you where they were, but what you don't get from that is actually what is going on on the ground. Yeah, especially with a lot of overgrowth, the imagery won't help that much. A day later, five hostages were released. Mm. But the story they told of their captivity merely reinforced the need for a rescue mission to free the remaining soldiers. Above all else, I was concerned about allegations of mistreatment of the British soldiers. There were clear suggestions that they had been subject to mock executions uh, and that they were being abused in other ways. That meant to send that there would have to be a decision to launch a military rescue. Nice. Not messing around. Marshall realizes that the helicopters are on an approach run. The next few minutes will decide the hostages' fate. Mm. Listen up, lads. We need to be ready to move at a moment's notice. Whatever belongings you've got left, pack them now. We we'll have time later. All right, boys, you heard him. OK, let's go. <laughs> I like his accent. putting in work good stuff after five days in hiding the SAS observers now get their first chance to go on the offensive they move to forward positions to guard against any attempt by the West Side boys to kill the hostages before the rescue team can reach them 
Mm. As the Chinooks get closer, Musa Bangura is being guarded outside Kale's house. The sounds of the helicopters will gradually increase, increase, until when they heard it, they all stopped talking and ran to Kale's house. They knock, 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 they knock on the door. We've had helicopters, it's like people want to attack us. Hmm. Yeah, they definitely do. <laughs> Okay. They're really not messing around now. Brad Tinian is hit by a single round. He's the first SAS rescuer to be injured. Mm. That sucks. It's gotta be rough. Fode Calais' reign of terror has just ended. He is one of the few rebels to give up without a fight. That's crazy. Nice. Okay, when you have all these helicopters coming in and then people are fast roping in, you're gonna be like crapping yourself, but when you have dudes in ghillie suits running out of the bushes and start lighting you up, then yeah, you're really not gonna be having a good time. <laughs> but yeah, get on those recon guys for putting in work and you know, now they get actually get to, you know, put up the fight too. So yeah, I'm sure, I hope they got some pretty solid commendations for that one. I, th I think everyone involved should have gotten some award of some kind, but yeah, those recce guys putting, putting in some solid work. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Everyone here? All six British. All except Lieutenant Musa Sierra Leone. Where can I find him? You're back out on the veranda. He look left. It's a large white building. He's in there. Okay. Everyone all right? Okay. Right. Stay here until I get back. Here. Okay. Nice. He knows what he's doing. 50 meters away. Musa is trapped under wreckage as Calais' house collapses during the attack. I was there until when I heard voices calling my name, Musa, Musa. Musa! Musa! That time I recognized that these are British voices. Don't move! If you move, I shoot! I said, oh, don't shoot, it's Musa. <laughs> he had to carry me, I couldn't walk. I was very weak. It was smelly. I wonder how he coped with my smell. <laughs> because personally, I could smell myself. This guy, he's, he's worried about how he smelled after going through all of that. That's crazy. Yeah, he, he seems like a very solid dude. I'm, I'm sure he was an awesome liaison officer to have around, but yeah, <laughs> that, that's just pretty funny. <laughs> Sorry. Musa encounters Contabi for the last time. I was a bit happy because he's the type I would never <laughs> want him to be in prison. He should not be alive. <laughs> he was the first person that inflicted injuries on me, and he was the person that uh, indoctrinated me. And that was uh, too much for me, you know? Down! Right! Keep up, stay tight. Anyone gets hit, you keep moving. We look after the wounded. Follow him! Move it! Move it! Major! Weapon! 
Now! <laughs> not, me it. not messing around at all. Let's move out, go! Yeah. Another thing, when you have like overhead cover like that, it's very, very beneficial. Even for like, uh, you know, if you're assaulting a ship or whatnot, you, you'd push up like a, a raft just to get like the, the front half or the, the front sides of the ship. And that just prevents anyone from moving around unnecessarily. So the same thing with this overhead cover, it really provides a, a lot of help for everyone on the ground. <laughs> Many of the rebels captured that day have since been released. One in particular has not. My hmm. name is Fudi Kali. I'm one of the Westside commander. This is the first time Calais has been interviewed since his capture on the 10th of September 2000. Hmm. Some of my men arrested the Bichi soldier, not me. But you knew about it? Yes. Later on, they brought them out to me. Then they were being to me for some time. Then I will release about six. And then the balance remained on the camp until they attack us. Calais hmm. is serving a 50 year prison sentence for his part in the hostage crisis. One of the prosecution witnesses at his trial was Musa Bangura. They were with a oh. soldier named Musa Bangura. Do you remember him? Yeah, Menjo Bangua, now it's Menjo. Okay. He could testify. He go, okay. Yes. And do you think he was treated badly? No, uh, well, he explained himself. I don't think so. It's a soldier. Hmm. If we are not for opposition barriers, maybe we should have been in the same situation as we were five or six years ago. Because the West Side Boys have grown to so much strength that it's very difficult for any local force to defeat them. The country mm. was in a dire state, and uh, people were reeling from the internal strife. So here was actually a dramatic situation that had been resolved, and, um, and had been resolved successfully, and a lot of the people in Sierra Leone saw the positive nature of that. Yeah, for sure. Like you were saying, if, if they hadn't come in and done you know, handle the, the West Side boys and it could have gotten a lot, lot worse. Uh, even if it didn't get worse, it would have just persisted and that wouldn't, wouldn't have been good for anyone in Sierra Leone. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's crappy that, you know, people were taking hostage and whatnot, but at the end of the day, it really did, you know, create such a big positive, getting these guys out of the region and whatnot. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's very cool that they're able to actually go in and help like that. It was a blessing in disguise. I was... And I am still personally happy because directly or indirectly, I'm responsible for bringing peace to this country. That guy's awesome, dude. Very cool. It mm -hmm. was a tragic thing to happen, but this was an operation to, to save and support soldiers that were in peril. Major Alan Marshall will remain in the British Army. Lieutenant Musa Bangura will recover from most of his wounds. He will be promoted to Major in the Sierra Leone Army. Hell yeah. Brad Tinian will not survive his injuries. He is the only fatality among the British rescuers. The mission to free the hostages held by the Westside Boys is one of the great unsung military actions of modern times. A daring raid that not only saved hostages from certain death, but also helped save an entire country from descent 
into brutal anarchy. Hmm. Yeah, it must be really hard for the major to to be in the bird when you know he was he was seeing Brad Tinian pass away and whatnot. And he wasn't necessarily directly responsible for that, but you can imagine he probably put a little bit of blame on himself, as that usually tends to happen. But yeah, that's a that's a very uh, incredible story to hear about, and it kind of sucks that I wasn't really familiar with, with this operation until you know I guess like a, a week ago, but. Yeah, it's very awesome to, to finally learn up on these kind of these kinds of things. So I do appreciate these awesome recommendations, y'all. It really does help enlighten me on everything that has happened previously, and and it, it sheds light on people that deserve recognition and certain operations that deserve recognition. Um, but yeah, definitely keep the recommendations coming. This is a again a very solid recommendation and a very solid operation done by the SAS. Again, a lot of the times we, when you look at the SAS. They're pretty much the epitome of, of what you should be doing as far as getting these operations done correctly. So very nice, very awesome to, to check out. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit of a longer one, but uh, yeah, I think it was a very well produced video. I think uh, over by the by the BBC, but yeah, very well produced. So uh, I'm glad that they're able to actually make this publication. And it's also really cool that they're able to include Musa Bangura in the interviews. Because again, he, he he's such a badass. Just everything he was talking about, after all the stuff that he went through and, and how he was talking about it, yeah, he, that dude's a total badass. So it's cool that they're able to get him and do the interviews for this. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely comment and let me know what you think. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. But yeah, this is very very solid. So I do appreciate you guys coming over and watching with me. Cause uh, yeah, it's it's very cool to look up. And it's very cool to uh, educate ourselves on these sort of individuals and these operations. But yeah, that is it for this video. So I will see you all in the next one.